I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and I have been getting so many comments on people wanting to see me reassemble this 33 inch snapper that I tore apart uh, I think about two years ago. Now this is the one with the clamshell bagger and all the attachments. So let's get started and see if I remember how this thing came apart. Now, as I said before, you want to drop this baby. I have a source that I can get eight pinion gears if anybody's interested. Put that on there. Now we need the new axle. And whenever you buy a long axle, you always get the spacer. And that goes between the long axle and the short axle. Only because, might as well add that to the file. They couldn't figure out a way to weld that without putting a big gob of weld on there. So, as ingenious as they were, they came up with a great idea. They put that little spacer on there. And the notches in the spacer is so that the lubricant that you have in your differential can go through that notch that sits on here. It can go through the notch and get down in between the large and the short axle for lubricant. The old machines used to have a grease fitting in the end. You could grease them. They quit doing that. So if you want, you can throw a little grease on here while you assemble it. That'll help a little, hopefully. You're not going to need a lot. I'll just wipe it on there. As I turned it. And we'll slide this on. That makes it fit a little bit tighter. Get all the air out of there. Now we got to put the pinion gears in place. <laughs> this is the fun part. Because they always seem to fall out of place on me. Especially when you're dealing with eight of them. Now as you put these on here, one goes with the I better find out the exact name for these or I'm going to get out of that. Pinion spacers. One goes on this way and the next one goes on this way. If you put them all on the same way, your differential ain't going to work. And you're not going to go anywhere. You're just going to sit in one spot in your yard. This is, this is really the fun spot. You gotta get all these holes lined up. And all the gears to mesh in together. So like I said, One's up, one's down, one's up, one's down, up, down, up, down. Hey, we're good that way. Now, this cover, when you go to put this together, is only going to go on two ways. This way and 180 degrees around to get all the holes to line up. Which way is that? 
Well, I don't know. You're just going to have to put it on there and look. Well, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. There we go. They're all lined up. Now, do not, they tell you, do not reuse the bolts. Only because the new ones come with Loctite already on them. Just buy yourself some Loctite. I've always reused them and I've never had any trouble. A little Loctite on there and drop it in the hole. Now I know what you're going to ask. What if you get some on that spacer as the bolt goes through before it gets to the threads? It ain't going to matter because once you torque it down, that spacer doesn't rotate, just the outer gear. That stuff really decided to come out on that one. This is medium strength removable. Just in case I ever have to go in here and fix something, I won't have to heat it up with a torch to break it loose. That's enough on there. That's enough for two of them. You don't have to go crazy with this stuff because it's uh, a little bit goes quite a ways. Pretty much done. The grease gun. I'm done with that. I think. We'll just set it down here on the floor. Ugh. I got my wall done pretty much. Now the nice part about having it freestanding without hooking it to the wall. I can hang stuff on the back side I don't do, that I don't use very often, like hammers, um, uh, other extension air hose. I think I got a hacksaw back there, some uh, charts for torques on these bolts, um, some test wires. too fast screwing this together because that Loctite is going to take about 12 hours to set up. So don't, uh, don't worry about trying to get it all put together right away. Now 
they do have a witness mark on this cover. I had another one laying here somewhere. And uh, I guess that's to show you how it goes on. A little witness mark right here. I don't know if you can see that. There you can. The only problem with that is there's nothing on these gears to line it up with. So it don't, it don't help you a lot. Now they want this to be about 28 foot pounds of torque. Now you can get out a torque wrench if you want to. But I guarantee you I'm going to have more than 28 pounds of torque on here. That's 916s. So, tap it. I'd rather push down on it. Now if you lose some of these, you have to go to the hardware store and buy some. You want to get grade 8. And they're an oddball length. <clears throat> 5 16 24 bolts come in inch and a half and inch and three quarters. This is an inch and five eighths. And if you use the wrong ones, they're going to stick through the back side. And if they're too short, you're not going to get enough thread hooked into uh, your gear to hold properly. So you do have to use the proper size. Now that we got this put together, it does kind of, sounds dry, well, I'm not going to bother greasing this, because once it's all together, it will be uh, filled with lube, and it'll be fine. Well, lunch is over, and we're back to work. Now, uh, <clears throat> I suppose you've noticed I've done some work to my wall. I wasn't really sure if I was going to like that or not, uh, but I had a lot of viewers say, oh, you, you go ahead, you're going to like it. it, it's going to be handy, and it's worked out pretty good. Uh, one thing I like about it, it's a lot like that freestanding wall over there. Let me spin you around. It's kind of a divider between that half of the shop and this half of the shop. And the nice part is when they're freestanding like that, you can hang stuff on both sides. So the stuff I don't use a lot, like hammers and an air extension, hacksaw, that kind of stuff's hanging on the back side. And I also finished up uh, this stand for the rear cases I'm working on it, so I can rotate it when I want to... Uh, work on different sides of it without actually getting up and moving it. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm trying to get this camera adjusted back where it was. Not that I'm lazy or anything, but hey, I am old. So 
we're back on this. So we got this in our little board with the holes in it. Next we want the bolt and then they put the washer on. Then they put the lock washer on, which makes no sense to me. You would think you'd want the lock washer under the head of the bolt so it doesn't back out. But that's the way they build them right from the factory and you can tell because there's the markings from the lock washer that is on top of the washer. Hey, go figure. I didn't design these things, I just tear them apart and put them back together. That's on there. Next, we want one of the little rubber O-rings to go down against the inside of the cover. Then we want one of the Belleville washers. I call them a cup washer because they're cupped and they'll capture and hold the O-ring. If you use a standard washer, you're going to squish the O-ring and it's going to pop out and it's not going to do you any good. So that goes on next. Then the little shaft goes on. Then we want to put our gear in there. Gear and sprocket. Next, we want our hexagon shaft. And I did order a new seal for this. I guess they call that a seal. Uh, I bet you want me to look and see what they really call it, don't you? They call it a hexagon, a hex nylon washer splash. I have no idea why they call it that. It's supposed to keep the lubricant from leaking out of your differential cover. It acts as a seal, but it doesn't seal much, believe me. <clears throat> you can tell it does rub against the surface. You can see the shiny wear marks from the last one. And it just fits in there and it rubs up against that and tries to keep the lubricant from leaking into the boot. It doesn't do a very good job, but then you need something in the boot to lubricate these. I get a lot of people calling and say, I can't ship my machine anymore. <clears throat> and I tell them, move your boots back, clean and grease this, both sides of the chain case. They'll get back with me and say, man, that, that fixed my problem. So we're going to throw this on here. We're going to stick this down in here. Now when you, if you working on an old one and you replace this, it has a boss on one side. See that boss sticking up in there? That goes against the gear. That helps apply some pressure against the inside of this cover so it doesn't leak so bad. Put this thing in here, right? There we go. <clears throat> now we're ready for the gear. It's been a while since I put one of these together. I mean the, the axle. Somewhere I have, where did that go? I lost it. I lost my little thrust washer that goes on here. I had it. I found it. That's got to go on there. <clears throat> that rubs up against the 
end of your bushing or your bearings, whatever you're going to have in here, <coughs> and keeps from wearing the face of your bushing down. This is typically what is in most of them. This is a, well, I'm not going to say it's a bronze, bronze bushing because it ain't. It's, they make these out of powdered metal and they're sprayed into a into a mold and that's how they can make these things for like six bucks. But this one don't fit too bad. But that's typically how that, what that rubs against. <clears throat> Without that on there, the end of the gear or this plate and the shoulder on the small axle is going to wear the face of this down and you're just going to end up with a lot of side plate. And that is not good. That's what was wrong with this whole machine <clears throat> was the man didn't check or probably didn't know he had to check for side plate. That's very important because when this thing shifts back and forth it's going to make that chain in there it will actually cut a slot right through the cover and that locks the machine up on him when the chain caught and he had no clue what was wrong with it. Apparently he never stood it up to look at it. Okay we got that on there. Now I messed up already. Told you, it's been a while since I did this. Let me pull this out of here. You gotta have this thrust washer that fits into the end of the hexagon tube. That's the one with the fingers on it. Now when you buy these new, <laughs> you're gonna get one of these. And this is what the new ones look like. See the points? That's how you can tell right away it's the wrong part. This one has no points on it. They're flattened off. <clears throat> These are made in China. Apparently they can't figure out or they can't tell that there's a difference between these two. This will not even fit on the axle. I mean, if it slid on the axle, like the real ones do, and was loose, you could file them or grind them off and you could use these. Now, <clears throat> I've been talking to the boss and we're going to try to make a die, a punch die and a female die that we can set these into and push it down through there and open this hole up to where it's supposed to be. Then we can grind these off and we can actually use these. I got a bunch of them. They sent me, I think I ordered a dozen thinking I was gonna get the good ones. They sent me them. So I called them and talked to them and uh, <clears throat> let them know that you got a problem. And he told me he would look through the bin to see if they had any of the good ones. And they don't. <clears throat> he says, I got 140 of these. So if I can come up with a die that we can repair these, I'm going to see if he'll send me some and I'll fix them for him for some free ones. Okay, now we got the axle in, we got this together. We need another rubber O-ring. You can see the little, they're very small, not much to them, but they do, they do keep it from sealing. Your cupped washer has to go on with the cup upward to capture the O-ring. <clears throat> now we're ready for a gasket. I'm going to carefully move this because I've got to explain this to you. 
and you're going to want to hear it. <laughs> the gasket for the differential is 24 95 24.50 it's over 24 bucks less than 25 the gasket for the chain case is the same price 24.50 let me dip you out now if you order one of these if you order them separately that's what you'll get but if you order this and this is called a transmission I don't know why it doesn't shift if I was going to call something a transmission I would call the chain case a transmission because it actually shifts speeds go figure but this is what you want to ask for this is the part number for this transmission gasket it's the same number as this one when you order these, you want to tell them you need the gasket kit for $24.50. And this is what comes. This is the way I order all of them now, and I found out once by accident. You get both gaskets. One's inside of the other. This is your chain case gasket. Pop this out of here. The die stamps them both out at the same time. Save that for later. Oh, well, I better tell you. These bags are sticky inside. They've got some kind of some kind of glue on it for some. The only purpose I can think of is so when the gaskets are in here, they don't slide around and get crunched in the corner. They're, they're stuck right in the middle of this. You can almost see the outline for it. It's stuck right in the bag. So when you get one of these, don't reach in and grab it and just pull it out because you will rip the gasket. You've got to put your hand between the sticky part of the bag and the gasket and break it loose. And then it'll pull out. Now this part of the gasket is quite wide compared to the rim on the transmission. So I cut mine to get the excess out of there. You don't need all of this. <clears throat> you don't have to if you don't want it. But what happens is all that extra material in there eventually is going to curl and it's going to get caught in these gears and just ground up into well, that's probably why your differential fluid is, turns into so much paste. Maybe it's got the gasket ground up in it. I don't know. But I take mine out. I don't leave it in there. So we got everything on there together. We got the thrust washer on here. We got the O-ring on. Let me grab the fender. And we're going to put the fender on. And these are ball bearings. I figured this machine is going to need it because of all the weight that it carries. get turned a little bit here. I just hate when it happens. And I need this, and this, and this. And we'll get the bolt started in here. I get a lot of people, I usually put Permatex on the gasket, and I probably will on this one, but 
not right now. It's pretty time consuming spreading that stuff around. So I'm just going to snug it up the way it is and we'll move on to the chain case. Whether or not I'm going to put the chain case in this video, I'll probably start another one. Now whether or not you use Permatex on these or not, after you put this together, I would say in a week, retighten the bolts because you're going to compress that gasket and they're going to become loose. Then I'd probably wait two weeks and I'd check them all again. Then I'd probably check them again in another two weeks until they stop becoming loose. That cork will compress. I guess that's why I put, usually put Permatex on this. And we put the lock nut on. Now this is a what they call a flange nut. It looks like it has a built-in washer. And it's also a locking flange nut. See the teeth on it. That goes on all by itself. Nothing else under it or over it. we can stick the thing on and put in some bolts in the fender. Turn you a little bit. Might have to back you up so you can see everything. to go around the other side. That thing's a little heavy. Remember, I told you I was old. Just gonna put these in finger tight for right now. And that's how you put the differential or transmission, as they call it, together. Now we're going to start working on the um, chain case. Duh. That'll be the next project and that'll be the next video. So if you watched the previous video about the um, goodness, I can't think, uh, the laser level and receiver or detector they call it and the tripod you're going to want to watch that it's very nice uh, unit 
and that whole kit, I'm going to call that a kit, all three pieces, I've never got a tripod or a receiver from a company that sends me a laser. This is the first one, Sigmund, and that will be given away as a kit in some upcoming video. I'm not going to say when, and it will be hidden in the video somewheres. So, it's on to the chain case in the next video. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And until next time, work safe, have fun, and get that snapper going because my yard is starting to dry out and things need picking up. So long.